Well, it's half past six and we're going live. Um, our house is starting to wake up and, uh, and maybe your house is starting to wake up too. So what we'll do is we'll just wait a few minutes and see who joins us. Uh, but this one won't be um, like Holy Communion on Thursday evening where we had to delete afterwards. Uh, but rather we're able to save this one and this one will stay uh, online. Hi Diane, lovely to have you with us and uh, who else is joining? Joanne is there as well so we've got two of us together, three of us together and hopefully others will join but, um, but that's not a problem if they don't. This can be watched later uh, on our Facebook page and also on our YouTube page. Um, I don't know if you can hear uh, all the uh, birds in the background um, there's, a, there's a big tree uh, down there in that distance over there where all the crows seem to sleep at night so they're obviously waking up as well. Hello mom, you're joining us too. <laughs> so, uh, and Paul, hi Paul, good to have you with us, waking up so early, hi Joy. Uh, certainly an early, early morning for, well certainly for us. Um, I don't think it's very often that we're up this early when it's not um, a school day. Michael, lovely to have you with us this morning as well, uh, joining us. Uh, so, so I'm standing here out, uh, out the back of the manse. If you're wondering where I am, uh, I'm, I'm on the roof of the, uh, of the bathroom. So at this stage, we're broadcasting from the top of the bathroom. Um, hopefully this roof is sturdy. We might be broadcasting the rest of it from the bathroom itself, uh, depending on how strong this roof is. But hey, our cat comes out of it. So uh, uh, if, if it's hold, strong enough to hold our cat, I'm sure it's strong enough to hold me. It's good to have you with us. It is Easter morning. Um, it is the day that we remember and celebrate the risen Christ. And uh, the sun is, um, well, it's not starting to appear just yet uh, in the sky. It's, uh, it's a bit cloudy and overcast, but hopefully we will see some of a sunrise uh, this morning. It, uh, it reminds me of, uh, of the 1st of January 2000, uh, after celebrating New Year's Eve on the 31st of December 1999. Um, I don't know how many... Um, of my family remember us heading down to uh, watch the sunrise uh, from from the Duncan in Port Elizabeth which is a big hill in Port Elizabeth overlooking the bay we went down to go watch the sunrise on the 1st of January 2000 only for it to be overcast and us not see the sun at all uh, Dorothy Nadia lovely to have you with us as well um, good of you to join us so we're going to to make a start uh, with things. Um, Roberta, good morning to you Roberta, lovely to have you with us as well and uh, I wonder if Lowry is awake too or if he is still in bed but if you're with us too Lowry, lovely to have you uh, with us too. Let's just hear words uh, of a hymn. See what a morning gloriously bright with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem. Folded the grave clothes, tomb filled with light as the angels announce Christ is risen. See God's salvation plan, wrought in love, born in pain, paid in sacrifice. Fulfilled in Christ the man, for he lives, Christ is risen from the dead. What well, beautiful, beautiful, lovely words uh, that remind us that this is a beautiful and bright day because Christ is risen and Christ is with us. Let's, let's pray. A loving God, as the sun rises behind us, we are reminded that the sun is risen. Christ is alive. And when we last met and spoke with each other um, through uh, the internet, uh, we remembered the death of Christ. And Saturday was a quiet day. Saturday was a day uh, where there was confusion and uncertainty uh, of what would happen. And on this morning, uh, as the women went to the tomb, as the disciples woke up, they did not realize what today would happen, what today would bring to them. But God, we know. We know that in spite of what we remembered on Friday, we know that in spite of the stillness of Saturday, Christ is risen. Not just today, but every day since that first Easter morning. And so we come and we celebrate in our tiredness, um, with the sleep in our eyes and, and our voices not quite yet uh, to the level that they should be. Uh, but we come and we lift up our hearts uh, in praise to you. Even if we can't lift up our voices, we lift our hearts and our lives up in praise to you, God. And so I pray that as we wake up on this Easter morning, 
as we start to emerge from our bedrooms and from our homes and, and, and we start to go about the things um, that we would normally do today as our children open up their Easter eggs and we start to eat things like that. God, may we never forget um, that you are risen and you are the source of our life and our joy. And, and so we praise your name, Lord. And, and we remember uh, what the words uh, of that hymn say, say uh, this is God's salvation plan. It has been wrought in love, it is born in pain, and it has been paid in sacrifice, fulfilled in Christ the man, and he lives. Christ is risen, and Christ is risen indeed. And so we praise you on this Easter morning, and we pray this in the precious name of the risen Saviour, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So I'm going to read to you a reflection, something that I've written yesterday, just to think about uh, what this, the significance uh, of this morning uh, is to us. Good morning to you, Dawn. Lovely to have you with us uh, as well. It was still and dark when Mary awoke. She had hardly slept these past two nights. Her Lord was dead. They had crucified him because they were afraid of him. He was a threat. She had followed him since she saw him first in Galilee, near her home in Magdala. At the time she had been demon-possessed, but he had set her free, and she had followed him ever since. The day before the Sabbath, he had been crucified, and when they were certain that he was dead, he was laid to rest in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. But because it had been close to sunset, they hadn't been able to give him a proper burial. Now that they could no longer show their love for him in life, at least the least they could do was honour him in death by giving him a proper burial with herbs and with ointments. This was her Lord, and he deserved to be buried with honour and respect. The Sabbath had been a difficult day. No one knew what to say or what to expect. Everyone seemed to be at a, at a loss about what would come next. The meal was shared, but Mary could hardly eat anything. The men had been afraid. Their teacher had been crucified. Would they be next? They wanted to stay hidden, locked in a room where no one could recognize them. No one could find them. But first Mary and some of the other women wanted to give him the burial that he deserved. They would go early after sunrise and bury him properly. But Mary couldn't wait. She had hardly slept. She needed to see him one last time, honour him one last time. And so quietly she slipped out of the house while the other women were still getting ready. She wanted to be there first alone at the entrance to the tomb, to weep alone, just her and her crucified Jesus. She walked carefully and quietly to the tomb where they had seen him being laid to rest. And as she walked the street and then the pathway, the first glimmers of light began to appear in the sky. The sun was beginning to rise, a new dawn, a new day. As she approached the garden where the tombs were, it dawned on her that she wouldn't be able to do what she had come to do because the tomb had been sealed. A large stone stood across the front of the tomb. She would either need to wait for some of the men to arrive to help her or go back and ask them. But she couldn't go back. She was too close to where he was buried to turn around now. She didn't want to be far away from him. She would wait. As she sat waiting at the entrance to the garden, she saw the other women coming down the road to join her. She got up and gathered the spices and the ointments that she had brought with her. The ground seemed to shake. An earthquake? She looked towards the tomb where Jesus was buried. Something wasn't right. The tomb seemed to be open. The stone had been moved. Rushing in, she saw that Jesus' body wasn't there. Just then the other women came into the tomb, and as Mary was telling them that his body had been taken, two men, whose clothes gleamed like white light, appeared there with them. 
The women were frightened. They hadn't seen any men near the tomb when they had arrived and they fell to the floor in fear. The men said, why are you looking for someone who is alive where the dead are buried? He isn't here. He is risen. Remember how he told you when you were still in Galilee that he would be rejected by the temple leaders, that he would be crucified and that after three days he would rise up alive. The men then told them to go and tell Peter and John what they had seen and heard in the tomb, that Jesus is alive. As the other women left, Mary stayed behind. Could it be true? Is it possible that these men were telling the truth that Jesus is alive? Or had he been taken? Had someone else taken his body so that they could spread a lie about him? That they could discredit him? As she sat in the garden alone, afraid, weeping, she heard a voice speak to her. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Confused, she answered, Sir, if you have taken him somewhere, tell me, and I will go and find him, and I will bring him back. But instead of answering her, he simply said, Mary. At the mention of her name, she knew. She knew that it was him. Rabbani, she said, which means teacher in Aramaic. It was true. Jesus is risen from the dead. As the Bible reveals the events that unfold in the coming hours and the coming days, we notice as the news spreads amongst Jesus' followers, there is a common fear. All right, so we're trying to reconnect. Hopefully we're back on again. There we are. Okay. As the news spread amongst Jesus' followers, there is a common theme, a disbelief and uncertainty about what they're hearing. When the women tell the disciples that the tomb is empty, they had to go and check for themselves. An empty tomb, unwrapped linen. Jesus certainly wasn't in the tomb, just as the women had said. But still they're not sure. Still they're afraid. They're still locked in the room when Jesus comes and appears to them. But not all of the disciples. They see him. They see the wounds in his hands and in his side and they believe. And then they tell Thomas, one of the disciples who wasn't there when Jesus had appeared to them. But Thomas doesn't believe them. Thomas, our Bible tells us, is sometimes known as Didymus, which means twin. Perhaps Thomas, more than any of the disciples, knows that just because someone looks like a person doesn't mean that they are that person. Perhaps he had often been confused with his twin when he was growing up. Perhaps he still is. Just because it looked like Jesus didn't mean that it was Jesus. Thomas didn't want just to see Jesus. He wanted to see the wounds. He wanted to see the evidence that this was the crucified Jesus. And so a week later, we are told Jesus appears to Thomas and shows him the wounds in his hands and in his side. And Thomas believes the risen Jesus is the crucified Jesus. Jesus, dead just a few days ago, is alive. There is a pattern on that first resurrection day. Uncertainty, fear and confusion. There were people talking about Jesus being alive, sharing the news of what they had seen and what they had heard, but still there was disbelief. In conversations that I had with some of our young people uh, about the resurrection, uh, in the confirmation classes that we were having before everything had to come to a stop, I told them that the empty tomb, that the rolled away stone, the empty uh, linen cloths uh, were not evidence that Jesus had risen, they were simply evidence that the tomb was empty. Any number of things could have happened to Jesus' body that morning. The evidence of the risen Jesus is found in the people's experience of the living Jesus. They encountered him and they spoke with him. And in that moment of meeting with the risen Jesus, they knew that it was true, that Jesus had been raised from the dead. And what about you? In this time of uncertainty, in this time of confusion and of fear, 
more than ever on platforms like Facebook and YouTube and Twitter uh, and Instagram, people are talking about God and people are talking about Jesus. Do you believe? Do you believe that when we say that He is our comfort and our strength in these times, that it is true? When we say that Jesus is risen and He is alive and He will never leave you or abandon you, do you know that? Not just with your head, but with your heart. The existence of God as a God of love and compassion and comfort and strength cannot be proven by a scientific formula or an intellectual debate or even a well-presented sermon. We know that God is real, that God loves and comforts and strengthens us when we experience His love and His comfort and His strength. I know that Jesus is risen not because of an empty tomb. I know that Jesus is risen because I have encountered the risen Jesus. On this Easter morning, as we go through the same emotions that those first disciples were experiencing, fear and anxiousness, confusion and uncertainty because we don't know what the future is going to look like, there is a risen Savior who wants to give you hope, no matter what the future brings, because He will be with you through all of it. That you will know that He is risen because you experience Him every day, in the good times and in the bad times. As the sun rises on this morning, in the light of the new, and the light of the new day breaks into the darkness of the night, know this, the sun has already risen. His light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. But know it not because I've told you that it's true. Know it because you know it's true. Not just with your head, but with your heart. Jesus is risen and Jesus is alive. Let us pray. Loving God, what incredible news. What an amazing thing to wake up to. What an incredible truth to wake up to on this Easter morning. That Jesus is risen and Jesus is alive. And as the light starts to break into the darkness of the night, we hold fast and we hold hard onto the truth that Jesus is alive and his light shines even in the darkness of this coronavirus. Even in the uncertainty of how long things will go on for. Will things ever be what they once were? Will they ever go back to the way they were? And in some areas, Lord, we pray that it won't. And in other areas, we just want to be back together as a community of people. We cannot wait to step into this building that is standing here alongside me. Not because we want to be in the building, but because we want to be together in a place where we know that you are present and you are with us. And it's a place where we come to bring you our praise. But God, the truth of Easter morning is that even though we cannot enter into that building, you are still with us wherever we are. And even though we are separate in our homes, still we are together and one in Christ Jesus. And so God, I thank you for the message of this Easter morning. Christ is risen, Christ is alive, and not even death can overcome the power and the strength of God. And so we lift up our hearts in song to you and we lift up our hearts in praise to you. And as we go about and live our lives, we live our lives in worship of you. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And it is in his powerful name that we pray these things and we declare that truth. Jesus is alive. Amen. And just to bring things to a close, to read to you words of a hymn that perhaps uh, is familiar to many of us, but reminds us of Christ's love and the amazing grace by which we are saved. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils and snares I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, 
and grace will lead me home. And when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we'd first begun. It has been lovely to be able to be with you this early on this Easter morning. And I do pray and hope that as the day goes on, as others start to wake up to the wonderful news and realization that Jesus is alive, uh, I do pray that it will be a day of blessing to you. I pray that you will just draw closer to God this morning. Later on this morning, on uh, it won't be on YouTube, uh, later on this morning, uh, the Reverend Stephen Scoose, who is our district superintendent here in the Northwest District of which Cookstown is a part of, uh, will be sharing an Easter message uh, with us. This message, this reflection, uh, will stay on YouTube, uh, on Facebook, so others can watch it. Uh, we will upload it to YouTube, so others can connect with YouTube if they don't have Facebook and see this reflection too. Uh, but it is wonderful to be with you this morning, and I do trust and hope and pray that the rest of your day will be as blessed uh, as it has been uh, so far, or that at least I hope that it has been so far as we have been gathering together on Facebook. And it's lovely uh, as I've been speaking to see comments pop up and, and people's names pop up as you join with us uh, this morning. Uh, and, and across uh, some names from the Republic of Ireland, uh, some names from South Africa, it's been great to be with you um, across the miles uh, and miles that separate us. Uh, but we are one in Christ this morning. And so may the blessing of God our Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with us all on this day and forevermore. Amen. Bye-bye, everyone.